What's up, my friends? My name is Jake. I'm so glad that The Current has brought you here today because we're about to dive into some pretty cool stuff. I mean, 95% of all living things on the Earth live below the surface of the water, so it's an endless world of things to discover. It's amazing how God created all of the beautiful and exciting things we love about the ocean, and I'm pumped that we're diving into a few of those today. One way that we can all get our fins in motion is to play a game. You'll see a picture of a sea creature, but it's going to be zoomed in on one part of it. You'll have 10 seconds to guess what sea friend you think it is. If you're ready, let's count down from three and say fins. Here we go. Three, two, one, fins. That was fun! There are so many awesome things in the deep blue, and some are so far below the surface that we may never see them. You know, that actually makes me think of what it's like to follow Jesus. Sometimes, we can't see the awesome things that following Jesus might be leading us to, but we can trust Him and move forward, believing that He has a good plan for our lives. Just one of many reasons I really love following Jesus, it's always an adventure. Following Jesus is the best decision you can make. So let me hear you say this after me as loud as you can. Follow Jesus. Great job. One way to follow Jesus is by worshiping him. Get on your feet and let's do that now by singing. Great singing, you can take a seat.
Oh, sorry. Surf's up. Everybody get on your feet and let's ride some waves. Watch out because there are some crazy things coming our way. We'll need to jump or duck as we ride to make it safely to shore. Great job! You can take a seat. Well, hey there, party people. Today, you're kicking it with me, Reed. Have you found yourself following something or someone to a place you never thought you'd go? I definitely have. Like that one time I was playing sharks and minnows in the pool with my brother, and I had my eyes closed, like any good shark would, and I swam right into the pool ladder. You heard that right, ladder one, breed none. And that's a funny story we could all laugh at, of course, but there are some sea creatures who follow along like their life depends on it. And that's because it does. In the ocean, there's this thing called a current, which is just water that's always flowing in a certain direction. And there are some underwater species that are made just to go with that flow. There are fish like sturgeon fish and parrotfish that aren't made to live in just one place. They're actually created by God to keep swimming from place to place. There are many reasons fish move, one of them being climate change. Some of the fish are created to live in cooler climates, so if it gets warmer in certain spots, the fish need to be able to move to a colder spot, and that's when they call on the current. There's one type of sea animal that really relies on the current though, and that's the sea turtle. Sea turtles need the current to help them migrate to the safest place for them to lay their eggs. Some of the species of turtles actually carried up to 3,700 miles one way, but don't worry, even though everyone knows that sea turtles are super cute, they're also really tough, and all 2,000 pounds of them, allowing them to flow along with the current with no fear. But there's something, or should I say someone, that I found to follow that's stronger than the current, and that's Jesus. Just like the sturgeon fish and the parrot fish following the current, my life really has been made better in every way by following Jesus day by day. And that's just like those sea turtles, I have no fear. Following Jesus has not been the easiest because there are times when I have no idea what's about to come my way. But there's one thing I know for sure. It's that just like our friends in the current, following Jesus is always worth it. That was fascinating. Can you believe that there are fish that couldn't live if it weren't for the current? Reed always finds a way to help us understand more about how everything in creation points us to Jesus. That reminds me a lot of this guy from the Bible named Peter. Here, you guys check this out. God's story. Peter fishes for men. So part of God's story is about a guy named Peter, and it goes like this. Actually, hold it right there. Peter's real name was Simon. He lived in a place called Capernaum where he had a wife and worked as a fisherman. Simon was just a normal guy, 
but his life was about to change forever. See, Simon was fishing one day, like usual, when Jesus got into Simon's boat. He taught some people who were standing around. Then he said to Simon, go out into deep water. Let down your nets so you can catch some fish. Simon had been fishing all night without catching anything. The last thing he wanted to do was go back out into deep water. But since Jesus told him to do it, Simon obeyed, even though it didn't make any sense. And guess what? He and all the other fishermen caught so many fish that their boats began to sink. When Simon finally got back to the shore, he fell to his feet in front of Jesus. He realized Jesus was not just a great teacher. He was God's son and the rescuer God had promised. Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Jesus wanted Simon to know that now that he knew who Jesus was, he could tell other people who Jesus was too. In fact, Jesus gave Simon a new name, Peter. It means rock, because Jesus would use Peter to build his church. Sometimes we think of a church as a building, but really, it's people who follow Jesus. And just like we might use rocks to build a church building, Peter was one of the very first people to follow Jesus and show others how to follow him too. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Simon was a normal guy. He lived in Capernaum. He was a fisherman. He met Jesus. Jesus told him to go to deep water. Simon obeyed. He caught fish. He realized Jesus was God's son. Jesus said Peter could tell others about Jesus. He called Simon Peter. And that's a part of God's story. The day Peter met Jesus changed his life forever. After that miraculous catch of fish, Peter knew that Jesus was God's son. So we started following Jesus by spending time with him, obeying everything he said to do, and telling others about it. And that's exactly what it looks like for you and me to follow Jesus too. Okay, I want to see if you can remember some things we've talked about today. So I have a few questions for you. What did Jesus tell Peter to do? A, be a fisher of men, B, eat breakfast by the pool, C, become a lifeguard, or D, all of the above? You guessed it. Jesus told Peter to be a fisher of men. Like a fisherman goes out searching for fish, Jesus wanted Peter and all of his followers to go out and find others who don't know Jesus and tell them the good news about it so that they can follow him too. Okay, I've got one more question for you. How can you follow Jesus this week? A, spend time with him by praying and reading your Bible. B, not think about what he says to do. C, tell someone that Jesus loves them. Or D, both A and C. If you said both A and C, you got it. You can follow Jesus by spending time with him, praying, reading your Bible, and telling others how much Jesus loves them. You guys, today has been so much fun, and I hope you'll come back next week. Before you go, let's pray together. Jesus, you are awesome. We know that following you is the best decision we can make. Show us how we can follow you every day. Amen. It's time for me to go, but the fun's not over yet. Check this out. Get on your feet. It's time to sing.
job. We had the best time diving into what God wanted to say to us today. You can take a seat.